da 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 Do you want to be a geographic kid? Would you like to know the things the tiger did? Count the stripes upon a zebra Watch an ostrich Need a cheetah You've just got, got to, to be, be a geographic kid See koala climb a tree While the whales swim in the sea Float with the sea after Watch the lizard cross the water There he go <laughs> It's fun to travel geographic style Go out and greet the dolphins in the wild Flamingo take a flapping The great big cat is napping Did you see that hippo's mouth? I think he smiled at you <laughs> Join the Geo Kids and you'll be smiling too I look at something and then give clues and uh, until you guess what it is. Oh. Like I spy something little mm -hmm. and furry mm -hmm. with itsy bitsy eyes. Oh, that's easy, silly. Me. Huh? Oh, gosh. You honey possum sure are <laughs> smart. I know. It's my turn now, right? Okay. I spy. With my cute little honey pots and mice, something that's brown. Brown, great. Let's let's see. Baba, over there. Huh? Oh, oh, Sunny. Most everything in the forest is brown. I know. Oh. Next clue. Mm, I spy something brown and twiggy. Huh? Oh. Is it the branch? No. Oh, is it uh, well, this one? Uh-uh. Oh. oh, how about this one? Wrong. Oh, gee, Sonny. Gosh, half of everything in the forest that's brown is Twiggy. Okay. I spy something brown and Twiggy with skinny legs and weird feeler dealies. You do? What is it? I don't know, but it's crawling up your arm right now. It is? Yep. See? <laughs> What's the matter, Bobby? That twig thing scare you? Me? No way. That thing was cool. Gosh, where'd it go anyway? I don't know. I can't see it anymore. Hmm. Well, that's the whole idea, mm -hmm. Sonny. Huh? What do you mean, Uncle Balzac? <laughs> well, that twig thing there is an insect called a walking stick. It is? Yeah. Gosh, that's just what it looks like, a walking stick. Boy, sure it's hard to see. Exactly. The walking stick is one of nature's great masters of camouflage. Camo who? Camouflage. When an animal is hard to see because it blends in with all the stuff around it, it's called camouflage. Take your eye off him and... Poof! Oh. He's gone. He is? Yep. Oh. 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 Where'd he go? 
Gosh, that walking stick is hard to find because it looks like all the other sticks in the forest. That's right. It's camouflage. You can say that again. Okay. That's right. It's camouflage. You can say that again. Oh, now, Bobby, stop that. Well, I can't find him anywhere. Hmm, kind of like hide-and-seek without needing a hiding place. Exactly. In fact, lots of creatures use camouflage. Like who? Well, there's a bunch of them. <laughs> when at first you see this leaf, you won't believe your eyes. This leaf is not a leaf at all, but a camouflaged butterfly. Or how about this lovely owl sitting in the tree? The owl is rather hard to see because it blends in perfectly. This lizard is a gecko and a favorite of mine. He's camouflaged against that tree, which makes him hard to find. Bet you can't find our feathered friend here nestled on the ground because her feathers blend so nicely with the stuff that's all around. Or how about a caterpillar hidden in this tree? Looking just like these springtime buds keeps it safe from enemies. Looky here at this neat bug. Camouflage is his game. Because he looks just like a leaf, Leaf Mantis is his name. Many animals are camouflaged. It's nature's special way to keep them safe and hidden all throughout the day. Rhino says the snake, c c c crab. My monkey, the rhino says the snake, c c c crab. My monkey, the rhino says the snake, c c c crab. My monkey, the rhino says the snake, c c c crab. My monkey. Animal names. Like rhinoceros, crab, and snake, all begin with letters, like S, which starts the snake. If you repeat that sound just before you sing the name, soon Animal Doo-Wop will be your favorite game. Give it a try. Rhino says the snake, c c c crab, my monkey. Rhino says the snake, c c c crab. My monkey, the rhino says the snake, c c c crab. My monkey, the rhino. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Francisco Flamingo here with a brand new game for all you Geo kids. It's called. Francisco's find the hidden <laughs> find the hidden <laughs> find the hidden <laughs> find <laughs> Okay, let's find that hidden animal. Come on, that's how you play the game. Can you find the hidden animal in this pile of leaves? I know there's one in there. Look, there it is, a frog that looks just like a leaf. It's called a horned frog. Look at that little horned frog hopping around looking like a leaf. That guy is really camouflaged. Okay, let's play again. Find the hidden animal in this picture. It's hard to see because it's camouflaged. Can you find it? I'll give you a hint. The animal is sitting very still. Can you spot the hidden animal? Can you? Oh my gosh, look at that. It's a funny looking bird called a potu. Look at that mouth. When he's not moving that big mouth, he's totally camouflaged. Oh boy, is he hard to see. Now that's one hidden animal. Okay, wasn't that fun? I can barely see that guy. I'll be back later with another hidden animal as soon as I can find one. So you see, Sonny, Sometimes what you think you see isn't really what you see at all because you aren't really looking at what you think you're seeing in the first place. <laughs> mm -hmm. See what I mean? <laughs> Not at all. 
Have you seen Bobby? Bobby? Well, now, let me see. <laughs> well, uh, uh, well, well. I spy with my old chameleon eye a leaf covered bush baby sitting nearby. You do? Where? There! Huh? Hey, how could you see me? I'm using catalog. <laughs> That's camouflage, Bobby. That's what I said. <laughs> yeah, besides, you can't just stick twigs and stuff all over yourself to blend in. Oh, you can't? Uh-uh. You have to really look like the stuff. Right, Uncle Balzac? Well, actually, Sonny, some animals do stick stuff on themselves to help them hide. They do? Ha! <laughs> no. Yeah, like some crabs, for instance. Crabs? What are they like? Well, first, there's the decorator crab. He attaches coral and other stuff to his shell for camouflage. Makes it hard for other creatures to know when he's around, or even know he's a crab. Then there's the staghorn hermit crab. This little tyke crawls into an old piece of coral and carries it on his back wherever he goes. You'd never know there was a crab in there now, would you? Hello! Which brings me to another hermit crab, my favorite. Once upon a time, there was a hermit crab named Harry. Harry lived inside a borrowed seashell. The hard shell protected the soft parts of Harry's body and also gave him a perfectly camouflaged hiding place on the ocean floor. One day, Harry realized he was getting too big for his little shell, so he went on a hunt to find a bigger, better one. Soon enough, Harry found a new shell. Quickly, he hopped out of the old one and scurried into the new one to try it on for size. Ah, perfect fit. Why, he even had some room to grow in there. Happy with his new home, Harry carefully peeled the protective sea anemones off his old shell and got ready to put them on the new one. You see, those little sea anemones helped camouflage Harry and made other creatures stay away from him because sea anemones can sting. Two perfect reasons for a hermit crab like Harry to cover his new house with him. So he did. And that was that. Harry the hermit crab happily hauled his new home away. for a Geo Kids fashion update. In winter, the Arctic fox wears a lovely coat of white. She blends in with the snow, which helps keep her out of sight. When the season changes and summer is on its way, the fox's coat will also change to a brownish shade of gray. So in winter, when it snows, the fox's coat is white. But in summer, to stay hidden, the gray coat looks just right. That's camouflage, and that's our fashion update. We're gonna count to ten now. Ten now. Geographic style. Geographic style. We're gonna count the creatures. creatures. Gonna make us smile. Gonna make us smile. We do it all together. together. Gonna be fun. Here we go now. One walking stick, two cuttlefish, three arctic foxes, four ostriches, five sleepy sloths, six horned frogs, seven octopuses, eight scorpion fish, nine hermit crabs, ten poltoos. All the different animals do the number dance. Now we did the counting, counting. from one to ten. From one to we're getting so excited. excited. Gonna do it again. Gonna do it again. You can count the creatures. creatures. Anywhere you go. Anywhere you go. Look for them in numbers. numbers. Find the ones you know. One, 
walking stick, two cuttlefish, three foxes, four ostriches, five sloths, six horned frogs, seven octopuses, eight scorpion fish, nine hermit crabs, ten boat twos. Count up all the animals. Anytime you get the chance. Ostriches have skinny legs and they run real fast. Who are these huge creatures racing across the African plain? Why, they're ostriches, the biggest birds living on Earth. They can't fly, but they sure can run fast. Look at them go. Once upon a time, there was a very special ostrich named Ollie. And his favorite hen was named Harriet. Howdy do, Harriet. Now, Ollie and Harriet built a big nest where they watched over many enormous ostrich eggs. In about six weeks, the eggs started to crack open. Unlike grown-up ostriches, the little chicks had speckled baby feathers that blended in with the grasses around their nest and made the chicks hard to see. After a few days, Ollie and Harriet took the chicks on their first field trip. Well, a trip across the field, that is. Along the way, those special baby feathers helped to camouflage the chicks in the grass and gave them the extra protection they needed while they were still little. As the months passed, the little ostrich chicks grew and grew. Their speckled baby feathers fell out and brand new grown-up feathers grew in. Every day, the young ostriches looked more and more grown up, just like Ollie and Harriet. How about that? Yoo-hoo, Mr. Walking Stick. Where are you? Uh, Sonny, come quick. I spy something camouflaged. Bobby, uh, it's not camouflaged. It's... Shh, shh, come on, look. Bobby? Bobby, where you... I just... You give it... Take... <gasps> what is it? I don't know. Alphabet rock. Hmm? Letter S. Oh. Yeah, makes the s sound like s s snake. Or s sunny. <laughs> and a s snail. Ew. So snails are s slimy. And so slow. You can s say that again, just like the three toed s sloth. Three toed? What's a s sloth? Well, <laughs> sit down, I'll tell you. Oh, you're sitting. Have you ever seen an animal so strange and very slow? There are things about this three-toed sloth that everyone should know. The sloth is good at climbing, but it takes its own sweet time. Those claws come in very handy on the trees it likes to climb. The three-toed sloth stays asleep for more than half the day. Some think this creature's lazy, but it's just the slow sloth way. Within the forest where it lives, the sloth is seldom seen. Cause all that thick and shaggy fur is sorta of colored green. But if you think the three-toed sloth is always very slow, wait until you see it swim through water down below. Even though the three-toed sloth may never win a race, it doesn't bother anyone with its slow and careful pace. All right, kids. You ever have one of those itches? That's right, you gotta find it. And when you find it, you gotta scratch it. Oh, yeah. Scratch that itch.
flamingo here to bring you a fascinating flamingo fact. Hey, I did it, and I didn't even sni sni sni. Ooh, now for that flamingo fact. Today we're going to learn about a fish who looks just like a rock. That's right, a rock. Right there. And his name is Scorpion Fish, and he lives at the bottom of the sea. Look at that. That fish is so camouflaged, you can't even see him. Hey, look, here comes a little spotted jawfish. Cute little jawfish. What a nice day for a swim, eh? Little spotted jawfish taking a swim all by herself near the rocks. Uh oh, that is not a rock, that's a scorpion fish. Jawfish, swim away! That's not a rock! Hey, jawfish, hey! That's not a. Ah! Oh my gosh, did you see that? That scorpion fish come right out of nowhere. What a big mouth! Whew, that was too close for me. Oh boy! Hey kids, wasn't that... And now for another GeoKids fashion update. Our feathery friend the ptarmigan is white with specks of brown. She blends in with the snow and twigs while sitting on the ground. In springtime, as the snow melts, her white feathers will fall out. Gray ones grow in and match the earth. That's what camouflage is all about. As the weather gets warmer still, her feathers continue to change. Depending on the weather, the ptarmigan's colors will rearrange. That's camouflage, and that's our fashion update. Stack walk. You can do it. Walk. Come on, walk, stick. Oh, Bobby, not every stick is a walking stick, you know. You can say that oh, again, oh, Sonny. Oh, 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 wow, we didn't even see you, Uncle Balzac. Oh, well, that's because we chameleons are naturally camouflaged in the bushes, too. Wow. <laughs> Cool? Heck, that's nothing. What if I told you we can even change colors? You can? Do it now, Uncle Balzac! Do it now! Whoa! Easy there, Bobby. <laughs> we chameleons change color depending on what kind of mood we're in. Mood? What's a mood? Well, uh, a mood is the way you feel. You know, happy, angry, furry. Furry isn't a mood, Bobby. But it's the way I feel. Oh, brother. Well, pull up a branch and let me tell you a little story about when I was younger. One day I was climbing up the trunk of a tree. I looked over yonder and what did I see? A cute little lizard, pretty as can be. <laughs> what do you know? She was staring back right at me. My face started smiling, my eyes opened wide. The good mood I was feeling changed my color outside. Cause I'm moody. Yeah, that's right, me. M double O D Y. When my emotions start to turn, you can watch my color turn. Because I'm moody! Yeah! After all, I'm a chameleon, that's what we do. Yeah. Just when I was thinking I'd ask her to dance, here comes this other lizard and ruins my chance. It got me so flustered I didn't know what to say. So I did a few push-ups, tried to scare him that way. Well, that didn't budge him, he just wouldn't go. Which made me so angry, I started to glow! Because I'm moody! Yeah, that's right, me old Uncle Balzac! M-double-O-D-Y! You see, when my emotions start to churn, you can watch my colors turn, because...
because I get so upset. I just, it just, I, I can't. It's hard to stop this. He put up his dukes and I was ready to fight. I looked back for my girl and she was nowhere in sight. That chameleon was gone and I never forget her smile. I'm telling you, she was one fine reptile. She made me moody. Yeah, Uncle Balzac, M-double-O-D-Y. You see, when my emotions start to churn, you can watch my colors turn. And she made my fever rise. You can see it in my eyes. My color starts to glow because I miss her so. She makes me moody. Oh, yeah. Oh, Uncle Balzac, that was amazing! Yeah, I'll say. Thanks! <laughs> well, if you think chameleons are amazing, wait till you see the cuttlefish. Cuttlefish? What kind of fish are they? Well, in fact, the cuttlefish isn't really a fish at all. It's an alien creature from outer space. <laughs> Just kidding. The cuttlefish is actually a member of the octopus family, and he can change colors so fast, he looks like an electric rainbow. He's got a cute little face, and funny thing is, his arms stick right out of his head. So when he eats, looks like he sucks his food into his armpits. <laughs> but that's wrong. His mouth is actually hidden back there behind all those arms somewhere. Ooh, look at that! And the cuttlefish is a master of camouflage. Not only can he change colors to make himself look like the rocks and stuff all around him, but when he's looking for food, he buries himself on the ocean floor until he almost disappears. And then he sits really still so other creatures like this tasty little shrimp can't see him. Until it's too late. Boom! <laughs> shrimp cocktail, anyone? The cuttlefish. I bet that's a face you'll never forget. <laughs> Flowers are pretty and they smell real good. Something you I did here. Okay, let's play find the hidden animal again. Ready? Go. Find that hidden animal. Do you see an animal? All I see is a bunch of pretty pink flowers. Where is the animal hiding? There it is. Look at that. It's a crab spider in a lovely shade of pink, just like me. That crab spider looks just like one of those flowers. Okay, let's play again. Find the hidden animal. You can't see it because it's camouflaged. Where is it? Let's look more closely. All I see is some bark on a tree. Hey, wait a minute. It's a lizard called a gecko. He blends right in with that tree. We did it. We found those hidden animals. See you later. Swimming in the water Who's that? Living in the sea Who's that? Funny looking creature I wonder what its funny name could be Who's that? Who's that? Can you count the arms on this creature? Go ahead, count right up to eight 
Those eight arms are long and strong, and on the octopus, they look just great. Look at that. She's got eight arms. One, two, hold still. I'm trying to count them. See those hundreds of suckers underneath on the bottom side? The octopus uses those suckers to eat by grabbing food that she finds. Well, look at that. She caught a crab. She also uses those little suckers as she moves about on the ocean floor. And because the octopus has no bones, she can squeeze through the tiniest door. Well, look at that. I couldn't fit in there, could you? But the most amazing thing about the octopus is how she can change colors like that. She can camouflage herself lickety-split to match her surroundings wherever she's at. Look at that! Instant camouflage! So that's who's living in the water, near the bottom of the sea. The octopus with eight long arms. Amazing, don't you agree? That's who's swimming in the water. That's who's living in the sea. Such a funny looking creature. Surely doesn't look like you or me. Who's that? that walking stick again. Well, that's the whole point of camouflage, Sonny. If the walking stick were easy to find, well, he might be in danger. Oh. Huh? Bobby? Well, easy, son. You're gonna explode. Yeah, what are you doing anyway? Well, I'm being really mad so I can change colors like Uncle Balzac. What? Have I read yet? Bobby, that's not gonna work. Huh? Oh, okay. Uh, how about if I'm really happy? <laughs> Anything? Yellow? Purple? Anything? <laughs> Afraid not, Bobby. You're gonna be bush baby color the rest of your life. Huh? Oh, but I wanna be camouflaged. Well, to my old eyes, that bush baby fur makes you pretty hard to spot in all these trees here. It does? Yeah. Oh and to me, Sunny's pretty honey possum stripes help her blend in with the shadows when she runs around in the bushes. Oh, Uncle Balzac, you think I'm pretty? Absolutely. Actually, you sort of remind me of my Aunt Harriet. Who? She does? Pretty as a peach. <laughs> Thought she was a chicken, though. Stuck feathers on herself and strutted around the forest clucking like a hen for six years. What? Yeah, would have stopped her, but good old Uncle Earl said we needed the eggs. <laughs> Get it? Chicken? Eggs? It's a joke. Oh, oh yeah. Ooh, boy. <laughs> about time for those sloth races, don't you think? Yeah. Sloth races? Oh, yeah. It takes about an hour. Want to be a geographic kid? Would you like to know the things the tiger did? Count the stripes upon a zebra. Watch an ostrich. Meet a cheetah. You just got, got to, to be, be a geographic kid. kid. See koala climb a tree while they whale swim in the sea. Float with a sea after. Watch the lizard cross the water. There he go. It found to travel geographic style. Go out and greet the dolphins in the wild. Flamingo take a flapping. The great big cat is napping. 
Did you see that hippo's mouth? I think he smiled at you. Join the G.O. Kids and you'll be smiling too. Woo-hoo-hoo!